now as police intensify their nationwide hunt for the man behind a cowardly chemical attack on a mother and two young daughters. It's been revealed the suspect, Abdul Shakur Azadi, had arrived in Britain from Afghanistan seeking asylum and was convicted of a sex offence in 2018. Now, the government's children's minister, David Johnson, joins us now. Good morning to you. Thanks very much for joining us. Let's start off. I know that you've got, uh, you know, some childcare announcements you want to come on to, but obviously this is on the front page of the papers today. It's mm. a story that everybody's talking about. How could this situation happen then, that this man who arrived illegally in this country was convicted of a sex assault, had two failed asylum claims, was eventually given leave to stay here? Well, this was a horrific attack and my thoughts are with the victims of the attack and with the officers who were injured in responding to it. Um, the person you're referring to is the police's prime suspect at the moment. There is a live investigation um, and we're urging anybody who has any information to come forward in the hope that he can be apprehended. Um, I, you'll forgive me, I don't want to say anything that might prejudice that investigation, but the broader point here is that this is exactly, um, you know, cases we have heard in recent years, I don't know this individual's case uh, file, but cases we have heard in recent years which frustrate the British public where they feel the asylum system is 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 being abused. And that's the merry-go-round that we've got a plan to stop with our safety of Rwanda bill and other legislation. OK, I think pe people are just be wondering, you know, is this a, a, a one-off error? Is this a failure in the system? Could there be others like him who have had something similar happen and would be out there? Well, while I, while I can't comment on him, what I can say is that the public have been rightly frustrated when they have read stories of people that seem to be able to make endless appeals for, for asylum having been denied, to change the reasons why they're making asylum and get all sorts of legal support to keep frustrating the decision that has been made. And that's why we have our plan through the Safety of Rwanda Bill and, and other legislation to end this, end this merry-go-round. You really believe that the Safety of Rwanda Bill will do that? You say as if, you, you talk as if the, the public are frustrated and as if somehow there's nothing you and the government can do about it. You've been in government for many, many years. Um, the, the reality of the situation is this happens because uh, the system is broken, unfunded, and uh, has been left unsorted out by you. Um, are you seriously suggesting, and the British public, who are frustrated but certainly not, so, not stupid, that uh, the Rwanda Bill is going to be the cure for all of this? Well, we've been bringing in the toughest legislation that has ever been um, uh, brought in to, to tackle these issues, to tackle illegal migration, to end this asylum merry-go-round. All of that legislation, by the way, opposed by the Labour Party, which has absolutely no plan for this area. And yes, I do believe our plan is working. The safety of Rwanda bill does end this merry-go-round where people can continually keep um, applying for asylum once, once rejected. And that's what the public expects and that's what we're delivering. Uh, look, we know that you're here to talk about this, um, you know, major national new recruitment campaign mm. that's being launched today. £1,000 sign-on bonuses for uh, nursery staff to be able to uh, encourage them to join the profession because you've got this situation where you're rolling out the scheme in April for um, childcare for parents of two-year-olds um, to be able to get the the free childcare that they're allowed to under the new system. There are big concerns, though, aren't there, about whether you've got the measures in place to be able to cope with this. The accusations are that there's not enough funding and there certainly won't be enough staffing for this to, to happen when you've said it will do. 
the cost of childcare is one of the biggest cost pressures facing families today. And so we're making the single largest investment that's ever been made in childcare. We're going to double the amount that we're spending on it, which is going to entitle working parents to 30 hours of free childcare every week from when their, their children are nine months old until they start school by the time we've rolled it out. What we are doing today is launching a big new recruitment campaign, including a financial incentives pilot, to make sure that we have the staff in place for the later stages of the rollout. So for April, when you can get the first 15 hours of childcare for your two-year-olds, and over 102,000 parents have already come forward to, to, to claim that already. For April, we feel confident we've got the number of staff that we need. We already saw a 13,000 increase in the number of staff last year. The recruitment campaign today is about making sure that by the time you can claim those 30 free hours every week from nine months until your child starts school, that's in September 20. 25, this campaign is making sure we've got the people in place for that. But that's not what we're hearing right. from the nursery managers, though. They are saying that they don't have the funding to be able to offer this to people and they don't have the staffing. And we know that there's a considerable number of nursery staff and childminders that are going to be leaving. 57% of nursery staff, 38% of childminders considering leaving the sector in the next 12 months. This survey's found that as many 50,000 new staff could be needed in 2024. There's a real crisis in the level of staffing, isn't it? And this cash incentive that you're offering is only a trial in, in 20 areas. Well, we're increasing the amount we're spending on, on childcare from, from 4 billion a year to eight billion a year. And the campaign today is one component of what we've doing what we're doing, but we've been increasing the rates that are paid to people who provide childcare. We gave them a big boost in 2022, big boost in 2023. We've seen significant increases in the national living wage, almost 10%, the Chancellor uh, announced um, last year. And we saw between 2022 and 2023, that our plan is working even before we begin that Sorry, rollout. Minister, 15, I do apologies to, to, to interrupt. We don't have uh, that much time. You say um, it, it's working. I wonder if you actually know, if you listen to people describe how difficult it is to get their kids um, into early childhood care. You know, last year, 37% of nursery closures were um, in the 30% of the most deprived areas. The poorest are being... Hit, hit, hit hardest by this, right? And those who can afford it go to private nurseries, many of which are owned by private equity. Just, just if we could, just have a listen to this. Our nursery has had to pull out of all government funding because of the huge deficit that they face. So our nursery are saying that they aren't able to offer the funded hours for two-year-olds um, because it simply isn't financially viable, the amount of funding that they get. My nursery have um, said that they will be offering the 15 free hours. Um, however, they will be up in their prices to coincide with the um, government schemes. So there's a lot of voices there saying that the nurseries are saying it's not financially viable. And for th those that are making it work, they're charging other parents more to be able to counteract it. Well, what we have what we have seen looking at the end of last year is a is an increase of fifteen thousand places that that are being provided for childcare, an increase of nearly thirteen thousand staff. Now we talk all the time, and I visit nurseries and other childcare settings all over the country to talk to them about the pressures they're, they're facing. When we increase our rates, which we've done each year um, in recent years, what we have done is, is base that on a survey of 10,000 providers who tell us exactly what costs yep. they are facing. Minister, and Minister, it's all about the places and the costs. Childcare in the UK remains immeasurably, certainly significantly higher than a number of our other uh, counterparts in the OECD, right? It's just more expensive than other parts of the world. And this is part of the drive to get people back to work. You've been in government for years. How proud of that record are you? That it costs that much to get your kids into early childhood, early childhood care? Well, the direct comparison between countries is, is, is difficult, but this is actually the latest in the expansions of childcare 
that we've made because when we when we came to power, some parents were able to get 15 hours for a particular age group. We made that all age. We made that all of those parents. We then doubled that entitlement. We've had a new 15 hours for disadvantaged uh, two-year-olds. We've now got this biggest single expansion of childcare ever, and the contrast is is clear. We've got a policy here which is going to save families up to six and a half thousand pounds on their child care costs because as you rightly say this is one of the biggest cost pressures facing working families and yet going into a general election this year the Labour Party still have no plan whatsoever no okay. policy okay. nothing they can say on child care for working families. We will have to leave it there but David Johnson Children's Minister thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.